Might be, depending on who you ask. One of my best golf swings, but it definitely wasn't. It had three big mistakes that I see from a lot of players when making a golf swing. Let's get stuck into the lesson and find out what they are. So that swing then had three faults that I see from a lot of golfers, generally from a beginner to a higher handicapper golfer, but you might be a, you know, a regular club golfer and you could be making one of these mistakes. So let's find out what the first one is and what you can do to fix it. Okay, so this one dawned on me the other day when watching the pros and it's all about the basics and one basic in particular, ball position. Because when I watch the Masters, their ball position was meticulous. It was always correct, whether they were on the big sloping lies, whether they were on a flat lie, whether they were on the driving range before, on the tee, whatever it was, it was always in a good position. When I come down here to Warrington Golf Club and I play with my pals or I'm at Trafford Golf Centre giving lessons, it's something that I can see that people sometimes fall into a bad habit of and almost overlook it. We could stand to the golf ball, hit a poor shot like I've just done and say, well, what did I do with my arms? Where was my club face? What did I do with my weight transition? But if my ball isn't in a good spot, I'm then going to have to manipulate my golf swing to try and actually get the club to bottom out at the right time because I put it in the wrong spot so now I've got to do something to try and actually get the club on the ball and get the desired flight I want. So first thing I want you to do is go through a bit of an MOT on your ball position. Make sure that as you're actually going through it, you know, from driver all the way down to your lob wedge as you look at it you've got to make sure that the ball position's right and if you look up on the uh, screen there there'll be a little link to a video that i did with ball position that goes through it all but for a brief understanding if i take my setup now and i've got this ball in the middle of my stance here we would see that that would be more of my wedge position so if i'm using my sand wedge my pitching wedge my lob wedge i would have that generally more towards the middle then if i'm playing with my 987 i would see generally that it would be about an inch in front of the center so just by literally just shuffling an inch away from the line away from the target we would see now that the ball just nudges up towards my lead foot then as i'm getting into my six five my four maybe my hybrid club it's going to be another inch so we're starting to see now that where that line is in the middle of the screen as i go up my clubs i actually move away from the line almost this way each time and i'm just shuffling to get it closer and then as i get up to my driver my three wood i would now see with my driver it's played off my lead foot almost the inset instep or my big toe and very similar with the three wood just a little bit behind what we don't want to see and one of the most common faults i see is we get an iron especially and we would see now that the line is pretty much running up the trail side of my body it's running up towards my right shoulder so from there then i'm generally going to come down too steep and i might trap it i might get a good strike but it comes out really low if not i will end up trying to move back and trying to help it so what we need to make sure is that as i set up i've got a seven iron here I'm going to see that the middle of the line is now on my middle of the, the body and then from there the ball would just be slightly in front of that and then as I make my golf swing I shift, move the middle of the body just in front of the line and see that I get a pretty good strike. So let's see if we can fix that poor ball position to start off with. So there, a really nice clip, off it goes job done simple as that fault number one fixed sort your ball position out make sure you're not falling into bad habits with it let's take a look at big mistake number two so the second big mistake i made in that golf swing and for the keen-eyed viewer you might already have spotted it but if we just get it played up here now for me what we will see is that if we have a line on the middle of the body of it as i make the backswing i shift into that trail side i do not rotate i sway off the golf ball end up staying behind it and i got my top shot up i might in some cases if i do sway off the golf ball i might slide forwards to try and counter correct it 
The golf swing is a rotational movement. Yes, we have a little bit of lateral movement, but we need to learn to rotate more. So what I want you to do, if you are someone who is finding that as they swing back, they really feel that they're pushing their trail hip over the trail foot and almost rolling into the instep here, I want you to do this drill for me. You would take your normal setup and if you've got an alignment cane, fantastic. For myself here, I'm just gonna place that into the ground there. And as we can see from this camera angle, as I now take my setup, it's a bit of a deterrent for me. If I were to move towards that camera, you can start to see I knock the cane there. Then what I want you to do, once you've taken your setup, I want you to take your club and place it across your shoulders for me like so. And the feeling that I want to get, I'm not trying to keep the club level and slide it back like so. I actually want to feel now that I work inside the head cover here and I get a bit more rotation. So notice the grip side of the club for me here goes up and the club head goes down because as I rotate and pivot, I'm now working around my center point. I'm not moving off it so much. So as I'm here, I would feel I get centered. I've got good rotation from this camera here. My right hip has now really turned nicely. I've got my chest looking back at the camera here instead of just swaying off and keeping everything square to the golf ball. Once we've done that then, we would now have some swings, some practice swings where I go up and I feel again that I'm inside the cane here. And then on the way down, I have my little shift and I turn through as I go into it. I'm not feeling that I'm on like a rocking ship and I'm going from side to side here. I wanna feel that rotation. If I can do that, it's gonna unlock a power source for me. It's gonna help me get the club bottoming out at the right time because I'll get a better weight transfer. And ultimately, I'll just hit better golf shots. So. If you're swing number two, you're that big mistake where you feel that you're really from side to side, start off with the club on the shoulders and here a little barrier that we feel that we're turning inside and then build it up to some shots. And if we hit this one off now with my good ball position and feel I get a bit more turn, we should see another pretty decent golf shot. and they're getting better as we go along. It's almost like these lessons work. Right, tip number three, let's have a look at it. So tip number three, if we pull the uh, swing up again there of the previous one from the start of the video, your keen-eyed viewer might notice that, that there was a lack of hinge. I see a lot of beginners especially lifting the club into position. We found out we want to turn now in the backswing, but what we also want to do, what I call a bit of the secret sauce to help you get a little bit more distance and a bit more snappiness and speed into it, we need to hinge. We need to learn how the golf club hinges and how we get our arms working in the backswing because, like I say, on this swing that we can see now, as I'm getting back, the lead arm and the lead wrist and the club are pretty much one straight angle here. I just pick it up and keep it as straight as possible. What that can then lead into is something now where if I take my normal setup here, if I pick it up, I can only get this far. So I might then bend and break my lead arm because I haven't got any hinge in my lead wrist. Leads to me starting to throw it. I've not got the correct angle to get the club released at the right time. I've not got any power now. I've not got any speed source. I've not got any leverage. So it is a key thing that we need to do. If I switch back to this camera behind me, it would be very much that I'm almost pointing the club back here and my hands are very high. The club head's level with the hands, but I'm just lifting the club head here. So, if you are that person who feels that when you take the club away, your lead wrist almost feels a bit isolated and you might see that it actually starts to bow in this manner and we get the club looking a little bit down towards the ground here and we get this happening and it feels very wooden in the wrist but flimsy in the arms. I want you to try this drill for me where we would take our good setup, good ball position. Then as I start to rotate, I want you to think about the butt of the club and your lead arm. We're gonna make some swings where I get to 
the lead arm being parallel with the floor, the hands now being in the middle of my chest, and I will want to see that my club is pointing down to in front of the golf ball here somewhere. So it's getting the 90 degree angle from face on, and then from behind me, I've got the club pointing down the butt of the club here towards the ground, a bit like a big torch shining a light just behind the golf ball, but slightly in front of the ball to target line here. And then once I've got that, that's a great source of actual power for me. It creates the angles I need to actually hit ball then turf, and it also becomes a little bit of a power source. It's a bit like cracking a whip. If we were cracking a whip, we do this. We let the whip actually snap. I wouldn't have my arm in a cast and be doing that motion. It just isn't gonna work. So what I would want to do is have this feeling now that as I swing back, I get the butt pointing towards the ground, I swing through, and I also get the butt pointing to the ground after I've completed this part of the follow through. So in this part of the drill, you will only hit half shots, but you will probably see that you're getting somewhere similar to the distance that we saw from the original one. So I take my good setup, I get that line up my body to see that my ball position's in the right point. I make a half swing, see that I'm starting to turn from here, get that little bit of hinge, and we should see now that we got a little bit of snap in this one and a little bit of zip. So hinge it, good turn, right ball position. And even there, we could probably hear from the microphone that was absolutely flushed. And like I say, it's not too far away from where the original one has gone. So three big swing mistakes. Are you making them? Go through that video again, check you're not. Use the drills incorporated if you are, and you'll start to see that you get rid of them. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson this week. If you have, do remember to hit that subscribe button for me. I want you to get better at golf. You're gonna do it with your free lessons here with me, Matt Fryer. Enjoy the game. I'm gonna go out and play here pretty soon. It's gorgeous down at Warrington today. So thanks for watching. See you in your next lesson.